I'm Father Paul. Welcome to St. Luke's for online worship for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator of heaven and earth. You open our eyes to see the wonders around us and our hearts and mouths to praise you. Now give us strength for loving service through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, and to whom all hearts be open, all desires are known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Christ the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of our Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. 
This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the way of his commandments, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. 
He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Revelation to John. 
Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory when he'd gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have lived, loved you, you also should love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Let's consider the context of Jesus' command that we genuinely love one another as Jesus has always loved us. The Gospel for today is a selection of the same scripture passages that we hear every Monday, Thursday in Holy Week. Following the meal and thereby emphasizing its importance, Jesus has washed his disciples' feet, everyone, including the one who will betray him and the one who will deny him. This is an act of abundant generosity 
an example of servant leadership, a new model of leading and caring for the church. It's quite a short gospel for today, and the bookends are betrayal and denial. Judas uh, betrays Jesus by abandoning the relationship. He leaves. He's the one who's gone out. He is on his way to guide the religious leaders and the temple police to arrest Jesus. On the other side of this reading, following the love commandment, is the prediction of Peter's denial of Jesus. So the commandment to love one another is even more poignant. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe in me, says Jesus. So, before all of this, Judas has left the building, abandoned the relationship with Jesus. That's the real betrayal. And after the love commandment, we hear of Peter's denial. The love commandment is not new, but what is new is the emphasis that Jesus places upon it. The disciples are expected to love one another and to love others with the same kind of self-sacrificial love that Jesus has shown them. Not just what he has demonstrated in the washing of the feet, but the kind of love Jesus has demonstrated over the past three years and will demonstrate by going to the cross for them. Let's carefully unpack, unpack these difficult verses of the gospel. Verse 31, when he had gone out. The beginning of this verse refers to Judas. Jesus has already foretold his betrayal, and the disciples have looked around at each other, uncertain about whom he is speaking. Take a good look at the great east window of our beautiful church building if you get a chance. This is the point in the story. At the prompting of Peter, the beloved disciple asked Jesus who it was, and Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread. And when he had dipped it in the dish, so when he had dipped it in the bread, he dipped when he had dipped the bread in, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. And after Judas received the bread, St. John tells us that Satan entered into Judas. And Jesus said to Judas, do quickly what you're going to do. The disciples are unsure of what Jesus is talking about, except Peter, the beloved disciple, and you, dear reader. So after receiving the piece of bread, Judas immediately went out. That's when he abandons the relationship. That's when he left the fellowship, when he left the building. When Judas leaves, it is night. But the light will shine in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. Glorification is a special word in John's Gospel, and according to Caroline Lewis, in her commentary on John, glorification means revealing the presence of God in our midst. In this chapter, the glorification of the Son of Man refers to the process of his passion, resurrection, ascension, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, given to the church ever thereafter. In other words, this process of glorification has begun as soon as Judas leaves the relationship. Jesus tells him, do quickly what you are going to do. When Judas leaves, then Jesus says, now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. The presence of God is now being clearly revealed. The next verse needs some explanation and paraphrasing. Verse 32. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. The verse begins with if, but since the original Greek uses a special grammatical construction, it would be better translated as since. The meaning of the verse is clearer if I paraphrase it. Since the process of glorification has already begun, God the Father will make known God's presence in the Son, and the revelation of God's presence will take place at once. Jesus is referring to his exodus, a very loaded word meaning his departure and his death. The glorification process and this new exodus will involve the redemption of all peoples, not just one nation. The gospel for today is really the beginning of what is called the farewell discourse, and it summarizes the whole coming chapters. Jesus said, little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Judeans, so I now say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. Jesus is going to the cross. The disciples cannot follow now, but later they will be able to follow Jesus again. The resurrection makes possible a new beginning, an opportunity to follow Jesus again. In the midst of these difficult words, Jesus gives the disciples a way through the difficulties and challenges to come. 
He says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. This, by this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. Here, the love commandment is not just a general commandment. It's specific to these disciples. And the love they share will sustain their faith and believing when Jesus has gone away. The disciples need the same experience, the love uh, that for one another as they experienced from Jesus. The love they have and we have for one another not only sustains their and our belief, it functions as a witness to the world that they are, and so are we, disciples of Jesus. The disciples will need to practice this same kind of love for one another, and indeed for the whole world, in order to continue revealing the presence of God in our midst. The sacrificial love that disciples have for one another is only possible for them and for us, given the reality of the resurrection, ascension, and the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church. The reading from Acts, which we heard today, points to a key moment in the life of the early church, where the Holy Spirit leads the nascent church in a direction the members were reluctant to go. There is a process of discernment that the church needs to go through before the leadership can understand where God is leading the church. Sound familiar? How about COVID? Well, the text for today is part of a longer narrative that spans nearly two chapters. Luke's Gospel and Acts clearly show how God's salvation would extend to the Gentiles, all the nations. So for instance, the Benedictus and Luke chapter two, ministry of Peter, Philip and John to the people in Samaria, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, Paul's special ministry to the Gentiles, Peter and Cornelius the centurion, and then Peter's report to the church in Jerusalem. All these episodes point to a change in heart and perception. Where fellowship with Gentiles, that is non-Jews, was forbidden, now they are included as full members of the church. Imagine the kind of people you would never associate with, let alone share a meal with, with your family. The early church was forced to not only include Gentiles, but as disciples, they were included in the love commandment. Jewish Christians were called to love Gentile Christians and vice versa. Jesus said, by this, everyone will know that you are my my disciples if you have love for one another. This kind of love is only possible with the help of God. We must love beyond all barriers with this kind of love, a love revealed in the risen Christ and poured out upon the church for us to share with a broken and hurting world. With such love, we can see the face of God in all people. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, John says. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Amen. I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son. Who is saved by the prophets, and I believe one holy Catholic and 
with all our heart and with all our mind. Let us pray to the Lord, saying together, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord together. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, particularly in the Ukraine-Russian conflict, and for all those parts of the world where conflict and violence persists. We pray for the, holy, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop Jeffrey, our priests, Fathers Paul and Dwight, our Deacon Susan, and all our parishioners, let us pray to the Lord together, saying, Lord, have mercy. For Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, for the leaders of the Commonwealth, and for all in authority throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord together. Lord, have mercy. For our city of Winnipeg, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord together, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphaned, and for the sick and suffering, particularly those afflicted with COVID and COVID-related illnesses. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the healthcare providers throughout our province and for those who support them, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all dangers, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion, protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of our patron saint, St. Luke, and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ. 
in whom all our intercessions are acceptable, through the Spirit, and who lives, reigns, and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you show us your way and give us your divine life. May everything we do be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. But chiefly are we bound to praise Thee for the glorious resurrection of Thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For He is the very Paschal Lamb, which was offered for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death and by his rising to life again hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. We laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these our creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. When the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, 
remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. We praise thee, we bless thee, we thank thee, and we pray to thee, Lord our God. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. God of love, in this Eucharist we have heard your truth and shared in your life. May we always walk in your way, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the risen Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the risen Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.